needing strength for my journey, I knelt at the cross where Jesus once died for me. And I asked, is this the place where hope abides? And this he said to me. As long 
as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has rescued me like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has rescued me Unending Lord, amazing grace. Let us come to Almighty God in prayer. Let us pray. How majestic you are, O God. How wonderful. How awesome you are. We acknowledge you today, O God. And this is the day that you have made. And we, your people, gathered here in your name to hear your word to us today. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord God Almighty, all honor, glory, and praise are due to you as we join our hearts virtually to sing your praises, to lift your name on high. Lord, to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, to adore you, to worship you in spirit and also in truth. Father, we praise you for your Holy Spirit whom you have given to your church to be with us, to inspire us, to teach us, to guide us, to show us your way, O oh God. Be with us, and let all that we do and say today be done to your honor and to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is taken from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 7 and 8. Grass withers and flowers fade when the Lord sends the wind blowing over them. People are no more enduring than grass. Yes, grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of our God endures forever.
Our second scripture lesson is taken from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. Jesus preaches in Galilee. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out searching for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, we must go on to the other villages around here. I have to preach in them also, because that is why I came. So he traveled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. A man suffering from a dreaded skin disease came to Jesus, knelt down, and begged him for help. If you want to, he said, you can make me clean. Jesus was filled with pity and reached out and touched him. I do want to, he answered. Be clean. At once the disease left the man and he was clean. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And these are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses' righteousness being restored And these are the days of great trials Of famine and darkness and sword and still we a voice in the desert crying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. When the trumpet calls, lift your voice on the year of Jubilee. God of Zion's hill, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant, David, building the temple of praise. And these are the days of great harvest, the fields are all white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. When the trumpet calls, lift your voice in the year of Jubilee. Because out of Zion's hill, salvation comes, and hold he comes. Riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. When the trumpet calls, lift your voice in the year of Jubilee. Cause out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Let us come to Almighty God once more in prayer. Let us pray. Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Show us your way, O God. Teach us what you would like us to do. What is it you require of us, O God, as your people, especially during this period of time in our history when we are challenged with a virus, a virus that seems, O Lord, do not end, but Lord, our faith is in you. Speak to us and guide us. Show us your way. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> when our church buildings were closed for Sunday worship, with effect from the 16th of March 2020, during the first lockdown, the session of the Armalaya Pastoral Region took a decision to have online services made available to all our members on YouTube every Wednesday and Sunday. These services included the celebration of the Sacrament of Holy Communion on the first Sunday of every month. When we were allowed to reopen on the 14th of June with guidelines from the Ministry of Health and the Synod, many of our members, out of an abundance of caution, especially the most vulnerable, opted not to worship physically in the church building. Again, the session agreed to continue to make our online services available on YouTube to ensure that all our members were spiritually fed. Today marks the 50th episode of our online worship services to our members. As we return to our church buildings once more being closed for Sunday worship, we say to God be the glory. If there is one thing we have been reminded of during the past few months because of the measures that had to be taken to minimize the spread of COVID-19 is that the church is not the building. The people of God, you and me, when we join our hearts in worship, even in our homes, we are the church. Someone sent me a meme during the lockdown with God and Satan talking. Satan is saying to God that through the coronavirus, all churches have been closed. God replied by saying that quite the opposite is true, that a church was opened in every home. We have also learned that during the lockdown, while people can be quarantined, the gospel cannot be quarantined. While it seems like most of the world is housebound right now, the gospel cannot be prevented from being proclaimed to God's people in their homes. The word of God is living, powerful, and always free. Isaiah 40 and verse 8 makes this clear when he says, the grass with us and the flower fades, but the word of our God endures forever. As we produce our 50th episode of our online worship, this is evidence that the word of God will endure forever, that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. We find this evidence also in the New Testament as well. The Apostle Paul was thrown into prison in Rome for his faith. Because he was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, he was chained to a wall and guarded by soldiers. He was definitely on lockdown. As much as he hated the chains that bound him, he was not discouraged. Paul knew that God's message of Jesus Christ crucified and raised from the dead for sinners was not on lockdown with him. Amazingly, God was using his chains, his circumstances to advance the gospel. The whole Roman imperial guard got to hear the gospel from him. He was given special opportunity to testify before kings and governors and preach Christ to them. And what's more, other Christians were encouraged by Paul's boldness as a prisoner, and it motivated them to spread the word of God. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, Even though I am being chained like a criminal, God's word is not changed. 
Paul said these words while he was in prison. We are living in a time when the gospel can be spread faster and farther than any time before. We can make sure the gospel spreads faster than the coronavirus because the gospel doesn't kill us, but it transforms us. It doesn't make us ill, but makes us spiritually healthy. It doesn't lock us down, but rather frees us from captivity to sin. Through our online services, we are ensuring that the gospel is not chained. This is a good reminder for all of us of our responsibility to Jesus during this lockdown. I don't mean to suggest we have been persecuted like Paul or unfairly treated in any way. We accept these public emergency health measures sadly, yet gladly, in order to protect our neighbors and ourselves from illness and prevent the spread of the pandemic. But our being homebound and unable to gather for physical worship in the church building doesn't mean that God's work and word are on lockdown. And shutting church buildings doesn't mean that Christ is shut down. Let us consider how the Lord's word continues to go out via, via live stream services, not only within our pastoral region, but other regions and even all over the world. Consider how our national church is still reaching out to God's people through the many various online worship services, Sunday school, etc. Consider how families have more time to spend together to open up the word of God together. Consider how people are using social media to study the Bible, talk and pray together for mutual encouragement in ways we did not consider only five months ago. Consider how many new opportunities for personal Christian witnesses God can work open up as a result of COVID-19. Christians may be unable to gather physically, but because we have been faithful to our Lord through our online services, the gospel is still able to reach the true church. In our passage from Mark, we see our Lord Jesus himself setting the example of how to spread the gospel. The first thing we see him doing is praying. We too, my dear friends, must pray without ceasing, trusting in God and believing that with him, all things are possible. Then we see Jesus showing care and compassion, meeting the needs of those he encountered. We too, my dear friends, must meet the needs of those who are in distress during this pandemic, even if it means searching for them wherever they are. The third thing our Lord did was share. Mark tells us, Simon and his companions went to look for him. Jesus said, let us go somewhere else to nearby villages so I can preach there also. Jesus had a greater purpose to share the gospel with as many people as possible. Through our online worship services, we have been able to reach many more people locally and abroad than we were able to reach only in the church building. While our buildings are closed, the gospel is still open to all. So how can we use our current circumstances to advance the word of God in our lives and in our neighborhoods? Consider the following possibilities. This can be a time for a richer devotional life and ministry to our families. There's more time to read the Bible, talk about it, pray, and even do special studies together without having to rush off. What a rich gift to have the gospel unleashed in our own homes. Or we can simply contact our brothers and sisters in Christ a friend or acquaintance, perhaps a neighbor who may have some challenges in dealing with being locked down 
and ask them if they would like us to pray with them or if there's anything we can do to help them. This is an ideal time to bear witness to others about Jesus' love, which should be seen in all of us. The gospel can't be quarantined, wrote Paul Wustasha. How true. Are we making use of every opportunity to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? God's word which created the world cannot be shut down by an epidemic. It cannot be shut up in prison or locked down in chains or tied down to the, to the house bound. It is the word of life, the seed of the kingdom, the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. Let us go out, my dear friends, and spread the gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now, in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fears, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Lord Jesus Christ, he love all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Whose voice is contentment? Whose 
His presence is born. Be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the Let us pray. As we go, O oh Lord, go with us. Let our lives bear witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ and his love. Help us, O oh Lord, to ensure that the gospel is proclaimed wherever we go. And in the words of St. Augustine, O oh Lord, let us preach Christ and use words only if necessary. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us and all of God's people wherever they may be, both now and forevermore.